In this lesson, we will learn how to automate movement with expressions. In this lesson, we're continuing from the previous scene file where we've animated this hovering object. All right, sweet. Now what we'll do is use an expression to create more of a variety to its movement. That way, we can create something that's a bit more lifelike. So what we'll do is tie an expression to the rotate x axis and we'll have it sway back and forth. So I'll show you how to set something like that up. But first, before we get to that, what is an expression? Well, it's a mathematical equation that we can apply to attributes to have them behave a certain way. So in this case, we'll create a type of sine wave pattern that will affect the rotate x axis of this object. Let's go in and get to it. We can access our expression editor a few ways. One way is to go to Window, Animation Editors, and you'll find it right at the bottom. When we take this route, you'll notice that the object will be loaded in. And then at that point, we can choose the channel that we'd like to affect in the Attributes list. Let me go ahead and close this out and show you another way we can access the Expression Editor. We can actually highlight the channel that we'd like to apply the expression to, and then we can come to the Edit menu in the channel box and choose Expressions. Or another way is to use Control, and then we'd simply go ahead and right click and take a look, and that's going to open up the same edit menu. And just FYI, if we were to simply right click inside of the channel box, that will open the channels menu. All right, so I'll go ahead and control click and choose expressions. And you can see when we take that route, now we have the exact path of the channel that we'd like to add to the expression. We've specified that here. So we can now go ahead and copy this. And very important, let's go ahead and switch our select filter to by expression name. If it remains at by object, here's what could happen. Imagine if you have typed out this very lengthy expression and you accidentally go in and select an object. What I'll do is go ahead and unreference the set layer and select a different object. You'll notice that mine's actually going to refresh the expression editor and it's essentially going to clear out anything you might have typed if you did not create the expression. So be really mindful of that. What I'll do is go ahead and switch this to by expression name, again underneath select filter, and then we'll go ahead and paste what we've copied. So that's platform underscore pad dot rotate x. All right, sweet. Now we'll make sure that this is affected by time. So what we'll do is say, that this channel here is equal to time, which looks at our scene's current time. What I'll now do is go ahead and put a semicolon to end this line of code. Fantastic. So just to reiterate, what we're saying is that what I'd like to do is have the object that's affected by the expression move based off of my frame rate. So once we reach a value of 24, that means that we would reach a value of 1 in our rotate x. Let's go ahead and have a look. I'll choose create. And then I'll go ahead and minimize the expression editor. So if we were to head over to, let's say, frame 24 and take a look at our object, you can see it has a value of 1. How cool. Now here's what's not so cool. Since we've only set it to be affected by time, it's going to continue to rotate forward as we move forward in time. We haven't set a function to have it move in a sine wave pattern. So let's do this. We'll go back to our expression editor. And now, let's go ahead and add a function. By the way, if you would like to access your functions list, to insert a function, you can go up to Insert Functions and take a look. We have several functions we can work with. There's a lot here. Now what we want is a math function, specifically sine, to create a sine wave. All right, sweet. So all we need to do is go ahead and type sign, and then we'll need to put time in parentheses. We're following the format that's inside of the insert functions menu. So if we were to go back to math functions, take a look. We have the function and then a parentheses. Inside of the parentheses will go the component that the function should affect. All right, sweet. So if we were to choose edit, you'll now notice that our platform is going to kind of rock back and forth, but it's very minor. So let's go ahead and increase that range. I'll go back to the expression editor. And let's go ahead and multiply this by, let's say, 5. So that sign of time times 5. Now when we choose edit, take a look. 
that rocking movement will be much more noticeable. But it's way too slow right now. And I think it rocks a bit too much. So let me go ahead and show you something really cool. If you would like to affect the speed of the expression, you can go inside of the parentheses here and you would multiply time by a given value. Let's say 2. Now watch. When we choose edit, it's going to rock twice as fast. Cool. But I think it's rocking a bit too much. I think our robot would eventually fall off. And that's not cool. So let's say we jump back to our expression editor. And we'll go ahead and drop this value that we've multiplied the entire expression by. This value of 5 here. Let's go ahead and set it to about 2. Now when we choose edit, watch this. When we play back the animation, now we've created something that looks more lifelike, right? Now it looks like it's actually hovering. Sweet. And of course you can take it a step further. Let's say if you wanted it to rock side to side, well you can go ahead and affect the x-axis. Remember we did not cycle this axis at all, so you can go ahead and highlight that channel, right click and choose break connections and you can apply an expression to that. How cool. And watch this, again this will continue through time. If I were to go to the graph editor, watch, I'll go ahead and turn off the cycling mode on the channels that we've cycled. So that's the translate Y and the rotate Z. I'll go to curves and choose pre-infinity constant and then I'll go back to curves and choose post-infinity constant. You'll see that despite turning off the cycle, of course this is going to continue through time which makes expressions very effective then. According to your expression you can have it be affected either yes by time, you could also have the channel be affected by another channel if you'd like and that's really popular when it comes to rigging characters and rigging models. Alright, fantastic. Now what I'll do is go to make sure to reapply the cycle on both of those channels. So that's the translate Y and the rotate Z. So that cycle and cycle. Fantastic. And you can see here that the rotate X is blocked because it has an expression. But in the next lesson I'm going to go ahead and show you how to bake all of this information out so we can work with keyframes.